Welcome to Hood Politics. In this episode, I will be discussing Esteban Seja, also known as Clown, from DNA. The facts of the case are as follows. When it comes to Los Angeles gangs, territory is one of the most important things, and if someone isn't familiar with the area, they may not know where one hood ends and another one begins. One way of knowing where you're at is to read the walls. Gang graffiti, often referred to as strikes or hit-ups, can let you know what hood you're in, who's beefing, and who has died. Although some may just see it as tagging, it's taken very seriously. Hey, yeah, tell these motherfuckers, man, the type of shit that'll happen if you catch, you know what I'm saying, somebody coming here trying to write that shit, man. Yeah, yeah, you talking about the little fake if you're trying to uh, come and sneak in the hood and uh, write on the wall, yeah, the bitches get caught. Uh, it, it, it's so guaranteed it's a rap. Line. Dead. Flat line. Stop paying over the hood. Stop paying over the hood. I gotta get off on you right now, man. Stop paying over the hood. Hey, it's my I don't give a f about your job, nigga. Colonia Flores. Bellflower. Colonia Flores. Paint over. I'm gonna get off on you. Paint over. Get. I'm gonna get off on you. Paint over it. In the 1990s and early 2000s, there was a surge in tagging crews. Unlike gangs, tagging crews' main objective was hitting up as many places as possible, and inevitably, they found themselves tagging within gang territories. This caused animosity between taggers and gang members, and often led to fights and shootings whenever they crossed paths. Some tagging crews even became what were known as tag bangers. Tag bangers carried themselves exactly like gang members, from their style of dress to carrying guns. Some tagging crews were absorbed into gangs, and some became gang themselves, like Cam, k S, and numerous others. But one of the most notorious crews turned gang is DNA. DNA originally stood for drugs and alcohol, but in more recent years they've gone by Devil's Nation and Devil's New Army, amongst other names. DNA claimed 73rd Street and the surrounding area, and they make it known by covering the walls in graffiti. On September 23rd, 2015, shortly after 4.30 p.m., a 19-year-old man named Christian Zuniga and a 15-year-old young man named Francisco Batista ventured into DNA territory. Christian and Francisco were members of a nearby rival gang called Endo. The pair began walking into an alley when Christian noticed a man standing nearby. Christian kept watch while Francisco began tagging the wall. Francisco used green paint to cross out DNA graffiti and sprayed Endo graffiti. This act is referred to as slashing or whacking out. A few moments later, Christian saw a man enter the alley, run towards them, and pull something from his right hip. Christian told Francisco to run. Christian heard gunfire as he ran away, but he was able to make it to safety. Unfortunately, Francisco wasn't so lucky. He was shot twice and died from his wounds. Detectives arrived at the scene and began their investigation. Two witnesses said they saw a man named Esteban Seja near the alley just after the shooting. Esteban was a member of DNA and went by the nicknames Clown and Payaso. One witness saw Esteban in her mother's apartment, which is near the alley. She said he looked pale and scared. The witness told him to leave and he responded, shh. Another witness heard someone running and then saw Esteban in the same apartment. He looked pale and surprised. From that same apartment, Esteban called his sister and asked for a ride to a dispensary. When she arrived, Esteban got into her back seat instead of the open front passenger seat, which she found weird. After dropping him off, Esteban's sister called him and told him that the police were investigating the shooting. He told her to tell the police that she didn't know anything. Later that day, a witness called 911 and told the operator what she saw and said that she believed Esteban was the shooter. Just after midnight, police showed Christian a photographic lineup. Christian picked out Esteban's picture and told the officers that he looked something like the shooter. Investigators were able to pull video footage from a camera near the alley. The man in the video had tattoos on his hands, just like Esteban. Esteban Seja was charged with murder for the death of Francisco Batista and the attempted murder of Christian Zuniga, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Investigators searched multiple homes looking for Esteban, but weren't able to locate him. Prosecutors then asked for the FBI to help track him down. Investigators conducted electronic surveillance of Esteban Bond's family and friends. They eventually found a phone with an Arizona area code that was being used in El Paso, Texas. They compared the calling patterns from that phone to the phone that Esteban previously used and found that the patterns were nearly identical. Esteban was arrested in El Paso and extradited back to Los Angeles. His bail was set at just over $3 million. Ultimately, Esteban Seja was found guilty with the murder of Francisco Batista and the attempted murder of Christian Zuniga, as well as gun 
and gang enhancement charges. Esteban Seja was sentenced to life in prison. This incident was just one situation in a city that has a long history of people being killed over graffiti. On Sunday, February 7, 2010, at around 9 p.m., a 40-year-old man named Ronald Barron was watching the Super Bowl with his girlfriend at the cottage bar located on Pico Boulevard. As Ronald left the bar, he noticed someone spraying graffiti on a nearby wall. Ronald confronted the tagger, and the tagger pulled out a gun and opened fire, striking Ronald in the chest. Ronald was transported to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Ronald was a former member of the Mansfield Gangster Crips and went by the nickname Looney. He was active during his younger years and sent to prison for attempted murder, but he grew tired of the gang life and decided to make a change. He began working with an organization called American, which was founded by the late Jim Brown. He could be found in schools and in jails helping others turn their lives around and providing them with the tools and the support to do so. A 16-year-old young man named Mark Villasenor was arrested and charged with Ronald's murder. He was from CAE, which stands for Catching All Enemies or Crazy and Evil. Mark told investigators that he believed Ronald was armed and reaching for his waistband, and he shot him because he was scared. Mark pled no contest to voluntary manslaughter, firearm possession, felony vandalism, and gang enhancement charges. Mark Villasenor was sentenced to 29 years in prison. On Saturday, April 15th, 2023, a group of men were painting over graffiti that had been tagged on the wall of North Ridge Ice Cream. Shortly afterwards, the group was spotted by a 24-year-old man named Jamal Jackson. Jamal was the person who tagged the wall, and he was angry that the men were painting over it. Jamal approached the man, pulled out a gun, and opened fire on the group. A 39-year-old man named Juan Lopez Suarez was killed. Three other men were wounded and transported to a hospital. Jamal was later arrested in the nearby city of Ontario and was charged with the murder of Juan Lopez Suarez and four counts of attempted murder, as well as gun charges. On June 7, 2023, nearly two months after the shooting, a 69-year-old man named Benjamin Marin passed away due to complications from his wounds. Jamal's charges were later upgraded. On Friday, June 24th, 2022, at around 7.20 p.m., Esteban Seja and another man named Adrian Garulo attacked another inmate named Hector Jimenez in the day room with an inmate-manufactured weapon. Hector was taken to the prison's triage center and an ambulance was called to take him to the hospital, but he died before he could be transported. Adrian was serving a life sentence for murder and two attempted murders at the time of the attack. Hector was serving a 26-year sentence for voluntary manslaughter when he was killed. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe.